Okay, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at meiosis. Uh, but before we look at meiosis, I think it's important for us to revisit mitosis. What we'll do in this video is we'll look at this uh, animation. It's from PBS Nova. I'm just going to talk over some of the animations. I'm not going to read all this stuff to you, but please visit that website and look over this in more detail. And then what I'll do is I'll take you through and show you some of these specifics, give you something to write down for some of the steps, talk about some of the important things that happen in prophase one, like crossing over and what these various vocabulary words are, homologous chromosomes, um, synapsis bivalence and then we'll do a quick comparison of mitosis and meiosis in more detail so that you can understand what's going on so let's start by looking at this side whoops at this side the left side of this animation so just look, let's just look at what's going on in here you should recall that the four stages in mitosis are prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase and if you peek over to the right, you'll see that when mitosis finishes, actually meiosis will continue going on for four more rounds. But uh, I'm not going to focus on that just yet. So take a look over here, starting with this particular cell. Mitosis happens in all body cells, where meiosis only happens in gametes, in the production of sperm and egg. So over here on the left, mitosis, we start uh, during... Interphase. So interphase is not considered mitosis yet. Interphase, all this exciting stuff is going on in the cell. The cell's growing, more organelles are being built. And then we finally reach uh, prophase. And in prophase, the chromosomes become visible. Now, in all of these diagrams that you see on the web or in your textbook, they're never going to show you all the actual chromosomes that are there. But in actuality, there should act there's only two of these red ones and two blue ones. There should actually be 23 of the red ones and 23 of the blue ones. And I've done this in a separate video for meiosis. Uh, I'll post the link, hopefully, if I remember. But over here, you can just take, they're just using fewer chromosomes to help you represent what's going on. Normally, what's happening here, okay, this is, we count this as four chromosomes. More on that later. Each chromosome here is made up of two sister chromatids. It's already been replicated to prepare for this process of mitosis. And the actual replica replication um, actually happened during interphase, specifically the S phase of interphase. But let's go ahead and look. look. So we're in prophase right now. In prophase, the nuclear membrane starts to, starts to disappear in, my, in mitosis, and also for meiosis, but more on that later. The nuclear membrane starts to disappear, and then these chromosomes become visible. That's basically it. And then you go to metaphase. So we're heading towards metaphase. And by the time you reach metaphase, metaphase sounds like meta middle phase. So everything's lined up in the middle as would be expected, like this. Notice over here, in metaphase, in meiosis, the first round of metaphase, it looks very, very different. We'll talk about that later. But anyways, here's metaphase in the center, and then you can pretty much predict what's going to happen here. These sister chromatids, which are exact replicas of the ones that they're attached to, are just going to split during something called anaphase. So anaphase is splitting. I like to think of it as Anna is breaking up with her boyfriend. So anaphase, there's splitting going on. And then finally, we reach uh, telophase. Telophase looks like an old school telephone, you know, with the, the earpiece and the mouthpiece. It looks kind of like a telephone. So now Anna is in the final phases of breaking up where she has the final phone call with her boyfriend. So this is telophase, and in telophase, we almost have two cells. This just has to split down the middle a little more, and then the nuclear membrane comes back. Now, if we go back and go back to the beginning of this, and then look at a more specific comparison between, notice uh, some of the fancy stuff that's already happening in, let's go back to prophase in the very beginning. In prophase here in mitosis, nothing fancy is happening. We just can see the chromosomes and the nuclear membrane starts to disappear. In meiosis, however, which actually has a prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1, and then goes through a prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, telophase 2, look at all this exciting stuff that's already happening in prophase 1. In prophase 1, all these chromosomes... The 23 red ones and the 23 blue ones, they all have a pair that matches up with them. So the 23, let's say, came from mom. The 23 came from dad. If we put them in order, there are chromosomes that match with each other. So this chromosome, this red chromosome, is actually homologous to this blue chromosome. It means they are the same chromosome. They contain the same gene loci and the same genes, but there might be different forms of those genes, different alleles. But the point is during prophase one, they pair up 
like this. They've already kind of found each other and have already, if you look closely, kind of linked up and are exchanging bits with each other. That's called crossing over. That's called crossing over. And then so when we get to metaphase one, this animation is going very slowly. Go to the website, it's better. When we get to metaphase one, look at what look at what's happening in pro in meiosis. Metaphase one in meiosis, these homologous pairs are lining up as opposed to just the chromosomes lining up totally randomly. These homologous pairs are lining up. Now this could be random, the blue one could be over here, but this is the whole part of making genetic variation. So the homologous chromosomes have lined up. Now we go look at anaphase, and in anaphase, same thing, they're splitting up. In this case, the sister chromatids are splitting up, but over here, the homologous chromosomes are splitting up. The sister chromatids are still intact. Why is that? Well, because as mitosis finishes here, Meiosis is only halfway through. Now look at what happens. Now we get to, now we have two cells, now we get to prophase two, and then what's happening, this now is gonna look exactly like what happened in mitosis. Now, nuclear membrane disappears again, and then these chromosomes, which have exchanged little bits, so they're actually kind of genetically different already, will now go move towards their uh, specific equators, and then when they actually split, here's where the actual sister chromatids will split. And at the end, if you study this carefully, you'll notice that each one of these cells has a genetically unique combination. And that's only using four chromosomes. But if you can imagine, if we started off with 46 chromosomes, and that the fact that crossing over can happen in multiple places, uh, you're going to see that that's, that gets a lot more uh, detailed. You can have so much genetic variation. So we'll split this up into two videos, but uh, for this first part here, let's at least go, go ahead and take a look at what's going on. So here is a list of the various phases that will happen here. Um, we talked about homologous chromosomes. Now, let me just remind you, this by itself, this little red chromosome, that's one chromosome. But during interphase, during interphase, that chromosome actually prepares for replication by uh, making a copy of itself and so it becomes uh, two sets right here. This is called, this is still called one chromosome, but we'd say this is one chromosome consisting of two sister chromatids. So that's actually the same thing as what this was right here. So at a certain point, we're going to end up with um, a whole bunch of these chromosomes and they all look like little X's because they're all prepared. So if we use the animation as an example, you can see uh, in the beginning inside. So let's just concentrate on what's inside the nucleus here. You have these four chromosomes. These two are homologous pairs and they will actually find each other during, during prophase one. And these are homologous, so they will actually find each other during prophase one, and they cross over with each other. And when they're finished crossing over, they end up actually exchanging bits. And so that's why you have these diagrams down here. That's basically what I wanted to emphasize using this diagram over here is what happens in prophase one. So in prophase one, the chromosomes condense. That's why they become visible. Spindle formation. Spindle formation is referring specifically to the little organelles here which will actually produce the spindle fibers to attach and help pull these things apart in all the various phases. Um, synapsis occurs. A synapsis is basically when the homologous chromosomes actually find each other. So we call, we, this is synapsis that has occurred and we call this set of two chromosomes crossing over like this, we call this a bivalent. So that's what this vocabulary is referring to. In metaphase one, the bivalence will move to the equator, as you can see in this diagram here. In anaphase one, it's the homologous pairs that will actually split up. The homologous pairs will actually split up. So when they actually line up in the center, we get something that looks like this, right? They've just exchanged some bits and pieces. When they split up during anaphase one, the sister chromatids are not splitting up, just those homologous pairs are splitting up. And then everything happens as you can as you can predict. Then in the second round, 
In the second round, that is when these actual uh, chromosomes, still consisting of two sister chromatids, they'll line up at the center and then they'll be separated. And then you end up with genetically unique information. So we're gonna continue on to part two of the video where we will do a direct comparison of mitosis and meiosis and make sure that we understand a lot of the specifics here. But here you have information. This is the basic, the very basic information you need to be able to identify um, for each particular phase. All right, continue to part two.